my dear students welcome to chapter 4 session 14 of kingdom animalia let me share the screen and start today's session hope you people are ready with your book pen pencil etc so shifting on to the slide well dear students to recall in my session 13 what we went through or what i explained was we started with phylum chordata we ended uh, phylum hemichordata which was the last phylum among invertebrates or non chordates so last class i started with phylum chordata and i also mentioned the very important or the three important characters that should be present in a chordate i explained in detail what are the three important characters that a chordate should possess and then we also discussed the other general characters or the other salient features that are present in chordates in common we went in detail if you have missed out please do attend session 13 and we explained sorry i explained you the differences between chordates and non chordates and also how you should present in the examination or how you should write it in your biology notebook the screen which is there in front of your eyes now now today's class we are classifying phylum chordata a very important part so once again this session is very very important to understand the future classes of chordates so now here in this class we are classifying phylum chordata so this classification is according to the cbse textbook what government has prescribed if you go into other textbook and into google you find different types of classification according to different biologists or taxonomist so as i as i have said you we are going to stick on only to to the government prescribed textbook so this classification we will follow and this is somewhat a standard classification you need not worry fine now to say about phylum chordata is classified into three sub phylum you can see here it is classified into three sub phylum remember i also said hemichordata was placed under chordata before even when i was studying i said so at that time phylum chordata was classified into four sub phylum but now we are studying only three sub phylum the three sub phylum that are first one is called as cephalochordata the second one urochordata and third one vertebrata so we have to understand whether it is a greek or latin term we have to understand what is the meaning in english then only it will become easier for us the word cephalochordata wherever in biology you come across cephalo cephalic end c e p h a l o cephalo means head chordata chorda means last class we have studied that is the first important character a rod like supporting structure in these organisms that is the main character to call an animal as an chordate a rod like supporting structure so cephalo means head chorda means that rod like structure the meaning of this cephalochordata may slightly misguide you saying this uh, notochord or the a uh, chordate like chorda like structure is present in the head region no this cephalochordata means it includes the organism which possess the notochord or the chord chorda like structure starting from head to the tail assume the pen what i am the digital pen what i am holding in my hand so this end is the head region and this end is the tail region so the notochord on the dorsal right runs from head to tail we'll see an example see this one cephalochordata example the example the animal is amphioxus you can see at the bottom i named it i don't think they will ask you the example 
just for your information this animal is from cephalochordata subphylum cephalochordata you can see here the blue color structure towards the dorsal side this is an adult animal keep in mind this is an adult animal not a larva so you can see uh, the blue color structure hope you have seen now i am going to overdraw on the same blue color structure maybe the line may go this side and that side you can see this structure got this blue color structure what you can see it is running from head till tail that rod like notochord is running from head to tail that's why the name cephalochordata that's it so this subphylum includes animals where the notochord runs from head to tail enough nothing much in detail we are going to study because we are going to study uh the right side part vertebrata part in detail for your examination so in your textbook they mention one or two lines on cephalochordata so we will also study that much hope cephalochordata cephalo means head corda means that notochord you got the meaning the second subphyla that we are going to study is urochordata uro refers to tail bala so you you might have got an idea now so this notochord is present in the tail yes 100% correct the point here is the notochord is present only in the tail region now i will modify the same sentence again in urochordates the notochord is found only in the tail region of larva only larva only and once it becomes adult even that notochord which was there in the tail will get disappeared i will show you an animal so this is a subphylum urochordata example tunicates herdmania an animal name is there so the left side what you can see i'll tick it now this is an adult it looks like a sac like structure chila tara goni chila tara artala a sac like structure it is a sedentary animal nodakke mute tara irutade okay and in adult if you see you will not get even a trace of rod like supporting structure there will be no traces of notochord but on the right side you see this right side this is the larva the larva you can assume it is almost resembling the chordate characteristic diagram here what happens in the larval stage you find a notochord i am drawing now that schematic representation what is there on the screen is a google diagram that is not that much correct but now i am altering it i am drawing the notochord in towards the tail region now you have got it so only that much notochord will be present that too only in the larval stage but as it develops into adult the left side diagram so this right side is the larva left side is the adult so when this larva develops or metamorphosizes into adult even that notochord which was present in the tail region will get eliminated okay the adult will not be having any traces of notochord that's why uro means tail that's why the name urochordata now i believe you recall my uh, balanoglossus class this one hemichordata this is what this is the last phylum of non chordates i said this was studied under chordates when i was a student why because when beginning taxonomists studied this animal they thought in this proboscis there was a projection there was a projection of digestive system in the proboscis region towards the head region head is not there i'm just telling they thought this projection itself as a notochord they misunderstood that this projection in folding itself is a notochord and they placed it under chordates hemi towards the hemisphere towards the head region so e region alli notochord ide anta confuse madkond idanna navu chordate alli ottta idu munche but ivaga it is clear so now they know that it is not a notochord so that's why it got a name hemichordata they did not change the name it 
so don't get confused because quadata word comes here so this is purely a non quadat the last phylum of non quadata okay so now phylum quadata was classified into three sub phylum cephalopodata we got to know what is cephalopodata the rod like supporting structure or the notochord runs from head to the tail we studied amphioxus as the example one important point i missed out the notochord runs from head to tail even in the adult that is the special point now urochordata the notochord is restricted only to the tail of larva not in the adult in adult you will not even find the traces of notochord and speaking about the third sub phylum vertebrata so here we are going to study so whatever information i spoke about cephalochordata and urochordata only that much is enough we are not going to study in detail but when it comes to vertebrata when it comes to vertebrata this we are going to study in detail so our concentration towards should be towards vertebrata now now vertebrata if you see in bracket i have used one more word called as craniata dear students cephalochordata and urochordata they are collectively called as protochordates proto once again means first or primitive so among the chordates cephalochordate and urochordates are considered as primitive chordates primitive chordates and vertebrates are advanced chordates primitive chordates or protochordates are also called as acraniata now if you recall my first second session asymmetry in case of porifren what was a was standing for absent a coelomates when we studied platyhelminthes a was standing for absent once again here a refers to absent cranium or craniata a refers to absent cranium okay cranium cranium in english refers to skull protochordates or cephalochordata and urochordata did not had skull okay they did not means their brain was not covered by a bony structure or a cartilaginous structure so they did not had a skull so they are called as a craniates a refers to absent cranium refers to skull now you see vertebrata i did not explain vertebrata yet but cranium word i am going to explain cranium or craniata refers to skull skull is present a bony or a cartilaginous skull is present enclosing the nervous system or the brain so that is another term so pro protochordates and acraniate are the uh, name for cephalochordate and urochordata vertebrata is called as also craniata so our concentration is towards vertebrata now now i we should concentrate what is this vertebrata name vertebrata in your terms you can keep in mind vertebral column vertebral column you know the simple term what you use is backbone right backbone now backbone most of you get confused that is the longest bone in our body no it is wrong our backbone or vertebral column is made up of many small pieces of bone we call it as vertebrae vertebrae anta helidre eno vertebral column alli one bone one bone in one vertebral column is called as vertebrae forget if you don't understand not a problem we are going to study this in detail but put it in your mind as much as possible our vertebral column is made up of series of bones and single bone is called as vertebrae now in vertebrates listen carefully in vertebrates the dorsal notochord gets converted or gets fragmented to form vertebral column now in our case we don't call it as notochord the notochord is modified into vertebral column that's why the organisms are called as vertebrates got it how did the name come 
in these organism the notochord is modified into vertebral column that's why the name vertebrata and they are also having skull that's why we are having another name called as craniata hope phylum chordata subdivided into subphylum cephalochordata you got the meaning urochordata you got the meaning together they are called as protochordates you got the meaning and why they are called as acraniates that also i explained and shifting on to the third one vertebrata how did the how did they get the name vertebrata you got the name because notochord is modified into vertebral column and why they are called as craniates because they are having skull now moving on to the next layer of this classification so we are stopping the study of cephalochordate and urochordate that means protochordates we are stopping here only this much of information is more than enough for you now speaking about vertebrata see this vertebrata is once again divided into super class it is divided into how many super class it is divided into two super class once again greek terms agnatha super class agnatha and super class gnathostomata we'll shift towards agnatha now once again here ye refers to ye refers to what you may be knowing okay now it is a single channel class i'm taking as much as care so that it should be like you're listening and i'm explaining to you sometimes i you you might have observed i i you feel like i'm speaking to you right even though there is no student i'm trying to speak i'm asking you okay okay right why because your brain should respond to my class that's why okay now ye gnata ye refers to what yeah your mind might have said the answer now a for absent here gnata gnata is a greek term means jaw jaw okay ye gnata in this animals there is no jaw absence of jaws in this group of animals or in this super class got it so now on the other side gnathostomata gnathostomata gnatho means already we studied now gnatho refers to jaw stomata stoma stomata word you come across in botany also in high school only you might have studied stomata is the openings on the leaf minute microscopic opening on the leaves yeah i agree in plants you keep it as opening in animals whenever stomata or stoma word comes mouth word should come to your mind mouth if it is not true mouth also it is somewhat like a mouth so whenever you come across stoma word in zoology when animal when you come to study in animals stoma always refers to mouth now what does this say the second one gnathostomata means it is a super class wherein the organisms are having jaws and mouth where the jaws is provide or the mouth is provided with jaws and when it comes to agnatha on the left side their mouth is not provided with jaws that is the basic difference we'll get into agnatha now and then we will shift on to gnathostomata agnatha if you see it is divided into two classes now two classes ostracodermy in the bracket i have put extinct extinct means these organisms are not there on earth now extinct ant helare halsogirodu how did we come to know about that just by fossil study so these organisms are extinct we are mentioning they are extinct and we are not going to study anything regarding ostracodermy ostracodermy means it was something like fishes they are not fishes the body derma echinodermata i said derma means what skin ostraco refers to scales scaly skinned organism scale skin iranta animals na ostracodermy ant heltidru adu alsogide adanna navu study madalla just we will mention they are extinct see here i collected the image the first one is ostracodermy on the body you see properly it is found many scales the external part of the body is covered by many scales maybe calcium carbonate external scales these organisms are not there on earth now 
they were looking like fish you we may get confused it is a fish now so example hemi cyclops cyclops fish okay this example they will not ask you i just took the photo now to express, to show you how exactly it may look okay so the body is having the external skin is having scaly skin so only they are called as ostracodermic now we will move on to the second class called as cyclostomata cyclostomata cycle means what will come to your mind atlas cycle ladybird cycle no cycle means a circle a round water cycle hydrogen cycle that you all studied cycle and telera on the round cyclo okay you can take circle or round round i will write it will be easy for you to understand stomata means what just now i said 2 minutes back means mouth cyclostomata round mouth this cyclostomata we are going to study just as a previous phylum what we studied the general character so i will show you the diagram there so until then maybe in the next session i will be uh, showing the diagram and uh, teaching this by the time you when uh, i start the next class you should be knowing cyclostomata means what the mouth is round that's it and it comes under agnatha means they won't be having jaws okay so this is class um ostracodermy and cyclostomata so here we end up the study of agnatha the organisms whose mouth is not having jaws shifting on to the right side now because right side we have to concentrate more from your examination point of view gnathostomata means what the mouth is provided with jaws now gnathostomata is classified into so many things first one i will come it is having class class placodermy placo in greek refers to plates tatte dermy means skin placodermy once again you can see in the bracket it is extinct so we are mentioning placodermy organisms are extinct uh, ostracodermy if you take uh, they are extinct apart today now i just saw in google around 420 million years ago only they are extinct from the earth and this one around 360 million years ago these organism also are extinct from the part of earth the second diagram you can see the second picture it is also looking like a fish only so both are aquatic only so these organisms are body is covered by plate like structure the skin is plate like structure so they are called as placodermy okay example i given it is pronounced as dinichis okay dinichis dinichitis sometimes okay because in future we will be studying like chondrichthys osteichthys dinichitis yeah you got that word here so placodermy we are not going to get in detail and no diagram nothing just that photo i showed you example name also they will not ask you okay i only took the risk of showing the photo and uh, uh, putting the example and uh, taking a courage to uh, uh, what pronounce that greek term fine okay now from your from your examination point it's very very important now gnathostomata is having two super classes to be frank if you see in other classification but i will just mention as it is in your textbook it is having the first class that we are going to study under gnathostomata is chondrichthys it is pronounced as chondrichthys that's what if you are very much experienced if you have come across you can pronounce it uh, properly or else you will struggle as i struggled while uh, uh, pronouncing the placodermy example because i studied this many a times and i'm teaching uh, in uh, pc so pc and degree so this is very easy to pronounce chondrichthys the english name for chondrichthys is
the english name of chondrichthys is cartilaginous fist what does it mean the endoskeleton adr mai olgade ro moolegalu moole ano word use madangilla the endoskeleton is made up of cartilage what is this cartilage cartilage means the soft bone okay your ear you can see this one i'm showing in the screen now ear this is a soft bone flexible bone so this is a cartilage nose tip is cartilage okay the endoskeleton of these fishes are cartilage that's why the name chondrichthys or in english we call it as cartilaginous fishes the second one is and the second one is so i label i'll give you the numbers now so this we are going to study first this we are going to study the in detail so this is the one third fourth fifth sixth and seventh we are going to study this in detail so first one cyclostomata we are going to study in detail round mouth now second one chondrichthys cartilaginous fishes why because their endoskeleton is made up of cartilage the third one is osteichthys you have to pronounce it as osteichthys in english bony osteo osteologist osteology osteo ant helidre bone so the endoskeleton of these fishes are made up of bone see we eat katla fish rohu fish and all right we get pierced with a thorn mullu mullu ant heltivala actually ad mull alla yeah it is little sharp but they are bones okay so chondrichthys and osteichthys see in some uh, classification chondrichthys and osteichthys generally they both okay they both i'll use a different color they both collectively will be considered as this two okay this two will be collectively considered as super class pisces is a greek term means fishes super class pisces class chondrichthys and class osteichthys anta kartare pisces means fishes okay not spices pisces and then speaking about the fourth one amphibia amphibia means already frog will be what hopping in your mind right so uh, we are going to study that in detail so amphibia and then reptilia snake crocodile lizards etc aves is the other name for what i know most of you will be knowing that birds and finally mammals mammals humans tiger lion etc so this is the detailed classification of phylum chordata and have highlighted what is important what is not important where we are going in detail and where we are not going in detail okay so our main concentration is towards this part that is vertebrata right i ask you to pause this screen now take a screenshot and make write this very neatly using scale pencil in your notebook you can rotate your book as a landscape view and you can write neatly you can use color pencils also because you are free now right you can write this neatly and then i will shift on to the explanation of vertebrata i'll move to the next slide now so phylum uh, chordata is classified into as i said europodata the same point what i said is there here the notopod is restricted only to the tail region of the larva example examples here i have mentioned according to the textbooks now okay and cephalochordata it runs from head to the tail what the notopod is present from head to tail even in the adult and vertebrata the notopod during their embryonic time is replaced or modified into cartilaginous or bony vertebral column the same thing what i explained in the chart is here you can pause the screen here and you can take the notes from here okay until you get the a uh, hard copy of study material into your hand this is also fine okay without waiting or wasting the time you can copy it from here also so better you write this points without seeing in your own sentences examples only you can copy from here okay i'll move to the next slide 
now sub phylum vertebrata we have to uh, briefly explain that okay i'll briefly explain sub phylum vertebrata the general characters of sub phylum vertebrata so here i'm not going to tell maybe uh, they are bilaterally symmetrical complete digestive system and uh, they are having um, close type of circulatory system and all no main points only we are going to study here because they are all understood they are the standard points so these animals have a true vertebral column i said in vertebrates in sub phylum vertebrata the notochord is modified into what vertebral column notochord is modified into vertebral column that's why we are calling them as vertebrates okay the members of vertebrata possesses notochord during that's what embryonally notochord irutade metamorphosize metamorphosize aagta aagta adu vertebral column agi convert agutte so that notochord or the vertebral can vertebral column can be cartilaginous or bony but they will form the vertebral column this fourth point i want you to concentrate keenly all vertebrates are chordates but all chordates are not vertebrates this question they had asked in examination for one marks give reason they had asked they had asked why or else they had asked give reason read the sentence again all vertebrates are chordates but all chordates are not vertebrates better i'll go to that chart it will be very very easy for you to understand yeah i'm in this chart now what did that sentence say all vertebrates are chordates i will use a green color now okay concentrate it is just a mind game that's it a small confusion now you will overcome it i believe all vertebrates are chordates we will stop with that sentence we will put a line no doubt vertebrata is coming under chordata so all the vertebrates are chordates because they are coming under chordata now the latter half of the sentence but all chordates are not vertebrates yes if you see chordates it is having cephalochordata urochordata and vertebrata right all chordates are not vertebrates because this cephalochordata and urochordata in general protochordates these do not they do not contain what vertebral column so now again i will repeat that sentence all vertebrates are chordates yes because vertebrates all of them are chordates but all chordates are not vertebrates because especially this region if you see they do not possess vertebral columns so they are not vertebrates hope this point is very much clear okay this fourth point is very much clear for you now apart from these basic characters they have muscular ventral muscular heart common for everyone with two or three chambers we will study when we come across next classes we will come across which class is having two chambered heart which class is having three chambered heart and which class is having four chambered heart we will come to that okay and kidneys for excretion and osmoregulation is common now paired appendages appendages means what any outgrowth from the main body it can be for locomotion okay which may be fins or limbs fins in case of fishes limbs in case of other organisms and vertebrates are bilaterally symmetrical i said these are all common points i'm not going to explain in detail because you should be knowing i have repeated this many a times the triploblastic coelom they are coelomates coelomic is there actually it is coelomates and they are having segmented body we are having thorax abdomen etc with complex differentiation of body tissue so we are having well formed well defined many organ system to take care of different parts of the body and one point i forgot to tell you here i said this chondrichthys and osteichthys here at the bottom of the chart if you see here if you see so this chondrichthys and osteichthys in some taxonomy taxonomist and in some classification they both are considered as super class physis physis means fishes their locomotor structure will be fins inside the water and concentrate this side i will encircle with this green color now what all are there amphibia reptilia birds and mammals this side you see 
chondrichthyes and ostichthyes they belong to superclass species so some taxonomists label this amphibia reptilia birds that is aves and mammals as this is a common term you should be knowing okay superclass tetrapoda tetra refers to four poda refers to what legs four legs a frog you take it will be having four legs you take reptilia for example crocodile you take four legs it will be having birds now don't tell me sir it is having only two legs another two limbs are modified for wings birds are also having four limbs okay limbs i will use the word and finally mammalia a dog a tiger sir in humans only two legs no humans are also having four limbs only two we call it as hand or two we call it as legs so uh, chondrichthyes and ostichthyes fishes they call it as spices based on the locomotor structure that is fins here locomotor structures are uh, limbs so they are also call it as tetrapoda so this is the classification of phylum chordata and we studied phylum uh, chordata and we ended up with sub phylum vertebrata this screen you can pause and take a screenshot to make the notes hope you took the screenshot and i'll just brief you now so in today's class we have studied the detailed classification of phylum chordata and we also studied the general characters of phylum sorry sub phylum vertebrata so next our duty is what we are going to study the numbers what i have given here we are going to study classes we are going to study a cy class cyclosomata not phylum cyclosomata like what we did in invertebrate so each class we are going to study in detail in the sense general characters and examples as we did in non chordates okay so signing off from today's session that is session 14 chapter 4 kingdom animalia take care do your homework